Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me in our podcast studios for this week's episode is Dr. Ashley Wagner. Dr. Wagner is technical sales manager for ProBiotech International. Dr. Wagner, thanks for joining me and welcome to the podcast. Um, why don't you start with a little introduction and some background about yourself? Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Um, so um, I am the the technical sales manager for ProBiotech International. I actually oversee a, a few different species, but in general, I'm a non-remnant nutritionist. Um, my background, I did my bachelor's and master's in, at Virginia Tech. Uh, my master's work really looked at enzymes in, in nursery pig diets. And then my PhD I did at the University of Kentucky, and that work really looked at protein metabolism and the effects of inflammation on protein synthesis in skeletal muscle. Excellent. Um, we're here to talk this week about an area of kind of novel innovation, at least for the pig industry, and specifically the use of a functional compound being monoterpenes to manage pig stress events. What can you tell us, Ashley, about monoterpenes? What are they and what are some kind of practical examples of them? Yeah, so monoterpenes are compounds that are found in many different plant extracts. And so that's been a really kind of future area that that we've been seeing more on the gut health side. So you've got examples of monoterpenes are thymol, eucalyptol, citronellol, citrol, linalol, and limonene. And those are just some examples. Now, not all of these have benefits to how we perceive stress. Some of them, as I mentioned, do have some functions for gut health. Um, but again, this is an area that's that's kind of progressing in the, in the swine industry. What are the plants that contain monoterpenes? I mean, can you harvest this from any plant or is it very specific ones? Yeah, actually, they're they're in lots of different plants. So, you know, I mentioned, I mentioned gut health for a minute. And so, you know, oregano, thyme, those all contain monoterpenes. Um, other plants and herbs can contain them too, like citrus can contain um, monoterpenes as well. So I can go buy citrus at the store. I can buy thyme at the store. Um, does it matter the source of the monoterpenes or the source of the plants you, that you get, or do they all work the same? Well, so they don't, because it's really down to the compound that we're talking about. So, you know, which compound actually does, you know, different things. And that's due to the chemical structure uh, of that compound. So, just because you buy, you know, for example, um, citrus, it may not have a high enough amount of the compound that, that could affect gut health or brain health. And so, you know, it's really less about the where the extract came from and how much of that true compound is in there. So um, as I understand it, you've got a lot of different players in the in the, the brain when it comes to stress. Um are the effects on the serotonin system greater to alleviate stress? related behavior, or is it more of a uh, GABAergic type system effect? So that is such a fascinating question. And actually, you know, what we have found with these monoterpenes and specific blends of them is that you can affect both systems. So I guess let's take a minute and talk about stress and what we see going on in our bodies and then how we act. And so I'm going to talk about people for a minute and then I'm going to talk about rodents. And I promise they will get back to pigs because that's what we're here to talk about. So if we think about human research that's been done on this and we talk about neurotransmitters such as serotonin, this is one that we think of as feeling happy, you know, so that we want to have elevated in our body. And if we have other hormones in our body that are elevated during a stress event, such as cortisol, we don't see an increase in serotonin. We actually see a decrease in serotonin and while, you know, cortisol is up. We also, during a stress event, will see rises in, in neurotransmitters like norepinephrine. So think of adrenaline, fight or flight, you know, the animal or the person is is nervous and is going to then have some type of full on physiological reaction. Some people might be nervous to give a talk, you know, in a public setting. So their heart rate might start increasing, their hands might start sweating. You know, we see the same thing um, in animals, whether that is a resulting in aggression or fighting or resulting in fleeing the situation. So, you know, this is, these are how these, these neurotransmitters start working. And then there are subsequent effects that can be damaging for their, their whole body. Um, that being said, I just gave one example, you know, of serotonin. There's a whole other set of system, the GABAergic system, that includes uh, GABA and dopamine. So dopamine is one that 
Think of addiction. Think of determination and drive and that seeking of pleasure. That is what dopamine feels like in our body. So if we have high dopamine, I'm typically happier because it's a pleasure, you know, feeling. Um, so both of these systems actually can be affected by monoterpenes. And what we see with them is increases in brain serotonin. And with our blend, we see an increase in the release of GABA, which actually stops the excited neurotransmission. So if there's a stress event and the brain is perceiving stress and, you know, then we're going to tell our whole system we have to react, right? Whether that's fleeing or aggression. When we have GABA release, we then have less of that message transfer. So it doesn't go all the way through the body to then have a physiological and then a behavioral response. So it's about changing the perception of stress at that basic level, which again, gets really complicated. So if we talk about rodents or we talk about humans, there's a lot of drugs that work on these two different systems. So you've got things like benzodiazepines. Um, so like diazepam is a, is a commercial generic one that works on the GABA system. And then you have SSRIs that work on that serotonin and neuroepinephrine system. But all they're doing is tricking the brain into not feeling or submitting that, that message of the stress. Um, but it doesn't mean the stresses still exist, whether that's mixing um, in the case of group housing or it's heat stress. You know, it's summertime and we're affected by that. So all of those things, you know, do they're still playing a role. So what we've done is, and with these monoterpenes, they've seen that different monoterpenes are able to affect both sides and both of those mechanisms to really get an additive effect. So to me, it's like working as well as or, you know, in comparison to these these types of drugs in humans that obviously we're not going to give to animals. Mm -hmm. Ashley, can we like sprinkle this stuff onto social media to calm people down and make them a little bit happier? Because I think that's the ultimate use here. Uh, and in all the lot of Reddit, like pig farmers know well that stress is counterindicated to everything we want the pigs to do, whether growing pigs or reproductive performance, right? Stress is bad. You mentioned a couple of specific stressors, but maybe take us a little deeper. What are the examples of stress that you think have the biggest negative impact on the pig and, and would be the best targets for this class of, of compounds? Well, so what I, I mean, I think that's such a great question. Um, actually, I read recently, um, I believe it was in Gl Global Ag Media, that they are attributing over $481 million in economic losses in the swine industry to heat stress. So obviously, I think that's a pretty big one. And um just based on that number. Um, and then again, you know, if you are um, using it or have a Prop 12 compliant bar, you know, we are dealing with with that whole new area um, and all of the mixing, you know, of those those cells during gestation. And so, of course, that's that's going to be a stressor. Um, transportation is another type of stressor. Um, so there's lots of, of different ones that, you know, are out there that even in the best management, I mean, we just can't we can't control all of these things. So, um, you know, having a product like this that's able to um, impact the stress perception, we, you know, it, if we can alleviate the perception of it, then we don't get that physiological response and therefore we don't have behavioral changes. So we've actually done some research in heat stress. And what we've seen with that is, you know, typically when, a, we'll use the example of a sow, but typically when a sow is under heat stress, we're not seeing as much feed intake. Um, we're seeing less milk production, um, and therefore we're having an impact on 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 piglet weaning weight. So, and then subsequently we're having an impact on wean to estrus interval and breeding, and that that is a major economic loss. So, with this, we actually have seen, and with our trials, and we've had done trials both with at the university level and then out and commercially, and we're actually seeing that we're getting shorter wean to estrus. We're getting better um, rebreeding during periods of heat stress. So we are able to mitigate, you know, that that stress perception. And that's because downstream, those, you know, the stress and what's going on in the body actually affects us HPA axis as well. And so that's going to affect, you know, fertility hormones and reproductive hormones. So if we can alleviate that upstream stress signaling to not have those reproductive hormones, we we have a better result, which is again getting gut sal, you know, back um, back pregnant. At Essential Ag, pork production is our life. We understand the real-world challenges producers face 
and that is why we strive to bring research-driven solutions to the industry. The team at Essential Ag is working hard every day to find and deliver innovative technologies to you because we are passionate about solving your problems. Well, thank you very much, Ashley. It's been uh, a wealth of information. And like any research discussion, I'm sure you've stimulated a lot of uh, a lot of thoughts for a lot of people out there in the audience. Uh, appreciate all the work you're doing on the topic. And thank you very much for coming here and being a part of the show. Oh, thank you for having me. This has been super fun. Uh, well, um, for our audience, thank you very much for being a part of this. Uh, Ashley and I couldn't get to have fun without your uh, listening and participating. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. Um, you know, we're constantly looking for new innovations like monoterpenes to help share with the industry all the latest and greatest things that are out there for pig producers. Um, please check out our website, uh, swinehealthblackbelt.com, if you have not, uh, and subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss not only Ashley's episode, but every Friday's episode that we publish. For Dr. Ashley Wagner, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H E L L O at W I S E N E T I X dot com. Um.